This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S-1 Ison and WTF NASA. Seriously, bro. Part 21. Seven trillion pounds of dust. I'm gonna start out cutting to the chase of this article, and then I'll go back and read it to you. So if you only want the meat and the frosting, but you don't want any of the vegetables, then here you go. All right, we're looking over at earthsky.org. They had an article come out on Comet Ison, and Spitzer taking a look at it. All right, this is what it says. Comet Ison, officially known as C-2012 S1, is less than three miles in diameter, about the size of a small mountain, and weighs between seven billion and seven trillion pounds. Because the comet is still very far away, its true size and density have not been determined accurately. All right, wait a second, you know? I mean, imagine like, if you were going out with a girl, how much does she weigh? Where it's like, oh, she either weighs a hundred, and seven pounds or a thousand and seven pounds i can't tell you know like i mean not that i would only date somebody based on their i don't know i don't think i could date a thousand pound person man unless she was a giant or the she hulk you know what i'm saying but like how do you not get that correct like or get can't you get closer it's either seven billion pounds or it's seven trillion pounds what do you guys got, though? Government math people working there? Or are you kind of admitting you have no idea about this comet yet? It's still a total mystery, which is why I've done 21 episodes on it. Thank you very much. It's less than three miles in diameter, though we don't know how big it is. I guess seven trillion pounds is the cutoff for the three, three mile diameter object. All right, so that's what we got to deal with, ladies and gentlemen. They still don't know a whole lot about this thing, and it's fascinating. And we're all fascinating, and the closer it gets, the more fascinating it becomes. Let's go back to me reading the article. Uh, Spitzer sees long tail, strong gas emissions from Comet Ison. Although the comet is behind the sun now, not visible from Earth, a space telescope has seen dust and carbon dioxide steadily fizzing away from it in a tail about 186,000 and 400 miles long. Well, fizzing, that, that sounds harmless. Like, even when even when the Willy Wonka kid and Uncle Charlie drank fizzy drink, they didn't die, they just almost died. You know what I'm saying? Almost died in steel blades that would rip them limb from limb, and they'd fall back down bloodied on all the chocolate. So fizzing's not that bad, though. I mean, it might almost kill you, but it, it, most times people don't die of fizz. Like, when they drink fizzies, that just makes it more delicious to your... Astronomers using NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope have observed what most likely are strong carbon dioxide emissions from Comet Ison ahead of its anticipated pass through the inner solar system later this year. Images captured June 13th with Spitzer's infrared array camera indicate carbon dioxide is slowly and steadily fizzing away from the so-called soda pop comet. Whoa! When did we call it a soda pop comet? Definitely the soda pop comet of the century, I guess, since it's the first one. Along with dust in the tail. Wow, mildly repetitive information. That's a high water booty. That is a high water booty. Ison has. Come here, baby. We estimate Ison is emitting about 2.2 million pounds of what is most likely carbon dioxide gas and about 120 million pounds of dust. Every day, said Carrie Lees, leader of NASA's Comet Ison Observation Campaign and a senior research scientist at John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland. Previous observations made by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and the Swift Gamma Ray Burst mission and deep impact spacecraft gave us only upper limits for any gas emission from Ison. Thanks to Spitzer, we now know for sure the comet's distant activity has been powered by gas. What? Uh, uh, what? Uh, someone want to fill me in? What else was it supposed to be powered by? I thought it was supposed to be powered by magic dirty snowball dust. And that's powered by gas? Who's got to pay that bill? Oh, man. Comet Ison was about 312 million miles from the sun, 3.35 times farther than Earth when the observations were made. These fabulous observations of Ison are unique and set the stage for more observations and discoveries to follow part of a comprehensive NASA campaign to observe the comet, said James L. Green, NASA's Director of Planetary Science in Washington. Ison is very exciting. We believe data collected from this comet can help explain how and when the solar system first formed. Whoa, you mean you guys don't know everything? That is a shocker. Just kidding, I don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Okay, great. Because the comet is still very far away, its true size and density have not been determined accurately. Thank you for admitting that. Like all comets, Ison is a dirty snowball made up of dust and frozen gases, such as water, ammonia, methane, and carbon dioxide. Isn't it neat that 
Wait, there aren't any comets that are a little different than that? Man, you guys are talking specifics a lot. Comet Ison is believed to be inbound on its first passage from the distant Oark cloud, a roughly spherical collection of comets and comet-like structures that exist in space between one-tenth light year and one light year from the sun. The comet will pass within 724,000 miles of the sun on November 28th. It's warming up gradually as it gets closer to the sun. In the process, different gases are heating up to the point evaporation, revealing themselves to instruments in space and on the ground. Carbon dioxide is thought to be the gas that powers emissions for most comets between the orbits of Saturn and asteroids. Okay, yeah, it's thought to be, um, which it, when I was, you know, taking a test, be like, I thought to be, this was the correct answer. Um, because, I mean, how many comets have we landed on? One? Okay, so yeah, that, isn't that called, called an outlier? I don't know, I'll have to Google that. Ison is believed to be inbound on its first passage from the distant Oort cloud, a roughly spherical collection of comets and comet-like structures that exist in space between one-tenth light year and one light year from the sun. The comet was discovered September 21st, roughly between Jupiter and Saturn, by Vitaly Nevsky and Artyom Novokov at the International Scientific Optical Network Ison near Kislovodovsk, Russia. This counts as an early detection of a comet, and the strong carbon dioxide emissions may have made that detection possible. All right, um, why does that sound creepy? It's scary. What does this mean? Uh, Astro Mutt thinks. My buddy Astro Mutt says, Ison is a one and done comet, meaning it'll go around the sun and then Saturn and the outer planets will eject it from our solar system and that it could put it back onto a path that could lead over a light year. Probably said all that all wrong. Uh, but he thinks it's one and done. At this point, if I had to guess, I guess it's going to crash into the sun because what would make something come from all the way out of nowhere, fly at the sun, to zip around it. Or whatever. Um, I think it's gonna go into the sun. I'm sure that'll have no effects though. I mean, no, actually I'm sure that'll have effect. Either way, this story gets more amazing. And I can't get over the fact that they're like, yeah, it's seven billion pounds or it's seven trillion pounds. We don't know. But then they know the size of it, which means that they still seem to be pretty up in the air on what it's made of completely. I would love to know what cameras they do have on it, which scopes of the spectrum we've seen it in. Uh, I know, uh, you know, this comet's pretty fascinating. It doesn't get boring. This, <clears throat> this observation gives us a good picture of part of the composition of Ison and by extension of the protoplanetary disk from which the planets were formed, says Lise. Much of the carbon in the comet appears to have locked up in carbon dioxide ice. We will know even more in late July and August when the comet begins to warm up near that water ice line outside the orbit of Mars and we can detect the most abundant frozen gases, which is water as it boils away from the comet. All right, supposedly the frost line outside of Mars is a big deal and we'll know a lot more around then. And it says we'll know more in late July. Well, it's 28th, 29th, 30th. You don't get much later than that in July. And why do they always say that all these comets just have like, if they got something on, it's pretty much just water. When like 10, 20, 30 years ago, they used to think that water was extremely rare in the universe. Like Earth was the only place that had it. And that turns out like Venus got water, Mercury's got water, the moon's got water, comets got water. So like water's everywhere now. And honestly, a while back, water was nowhere. So it's just crazy how the world and even science could change so fast. And it does remind us that when it comes to protoplanetary disk and planet formation, we really don't know a lot, man. I mean, we really don't. I don't care what scientists you want to line up. Nobody's come up with like, like okay, yeah, we've seen planets being formed, and this is ex we know a ton about the sun and how planets in the solar system and universes are formed and why they are, why they are. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we will keep following the story. And I'm sorry that, and I thought the most important information was the information given in this article where basically, you know, they're, they're putting their hands up going, we're studying it a lot, but we're still finding brand new, amazing surprises all the time. And isn't it funny that NASA is pretty much going to have about 19 or 20 cameras on Ison from beginning to end, which is about as many videos as I made and asked them to put cameras on it. So I do want to give props to NASA and Amy for that. And I do think it's cool. They're watching it in all the spectrums. Um, once again, how do you know it's just water? Like what makes you assume this thing's come all the way across the universe and you think it's just gonna be oh yeah it's just gonna have water on it we don't know what it's gonna have on it but i'm as interested as you guys are and every day we get closer man i know this has been a long journey we are almost there radio thor comet isa tuning in Oh yeah, and if you look over, the mainstream media is waking up to the story. The Huffington Post says, Comet Ison is spewing gas and dust in huge quantities, NASA scientists say. And Business Insider even has science's favorite guy saying, Comet Ison is not going to hit Earth. 
And that is so like five months ago, man. Seriously, do you guys not watch my shit at all? All right, but Bloomberg and the gang, Matt Miller, are still totally absent. But don't take any points away from them. They're too busy covering the awesome story of how Kanye West and Jay-Z are reforming capitalism, but in a non-threatening, non-Illuminati way. So thanks for those hard-hitting puff pieces, Bloomberg. And keep throwing out beautiful women who say credit default swaps. Space underwear in your face. Alas, on the moon. Moon Nazis meet, and the New World Order plots. See? Yeah. Oh, a weak heart cannot take these tales. Who will win? Must light and darkness always be trapped in a yin and yang spin? No man wants to take a horn in the nuts. Thank God in the universe, Orion is not a putz. Okay, sweet. God bless everybody.